it was the early 1900s when this original farm place was established, but um, you know, that's been obviously the transition between my dad and his dad and so forth has taken place in between and now it's between dad and I where we farm together and mainly corn and soybeans, corn and soybean operation and work mainly off of the home place which is the original place that was established and the farm ground around it. There wasn't ever a time that I didn't farm. I was either farming the carpet to farming the gravel out in the driveway to farming the church pews on Sunday morning. I mean, I kind of lived and died by it. I I don't know. You know, you I kind of started a collection of toys and then you'd play with them. You'd see dad out in the field and then you'd think, well, I want to do that or whatever. So I guess I started that way. I know when I went through high school, then it was like, well, you got involved in FFA and that's kind of where I got started farming. So, you know, I started out with just little 30 acres and everything kind of just built off of that and gave me the experience. Everybody says, well, what, if you had to choose what you wanted to do as an occupation, I said, I'd have no idea. If I wasn't, if I didn't grow up on the farm, I mean, it was a no brainer for me. I knew exactly what I wanted to do and I didn't, you know, there was obviously steps you had to go to get to that point, but um, I guess it all just makes you appreciate what you got. It's not, I don't know. They're, what we do here isn't nothing special compared to anybody else. I mean, everybody in this area, we're in an ag community, so, you know, neighbors have just as much passion about what they're farming as what we do, but, it, you know, we all kind of work towards the same common goal, which kind of makes it cool because, you know, you're out working late, putting in the hours, and you see your neighbors out doing the same, and, you know, it just makes you kind of, it makes you feel like you're, you're trying to do something good. You're trying to. You're all. You're all trying to accomplish the same. The same thing. But um, you know, I. I guess it's not really all about. It's not about me. It's more. You know, when Dad grew up farming, his dad left him the transition to get him started. Now Dad's doing the same for me, transitioning to get me started. And more or less, you're doing it for the next generation. So. It's not really about me at this point. I just want to be able to build up and if the opportunity have the opportunity for if there's a kid down the road that wants to farm or has interest in ag that the that it's here for them if they want to take part in it and just keeping keeping local ag and uh, the kids involved in agriculture I think is huge. What do you do on a normal day? And it's like, I can't tell you what I'm gonna do tomorrow. I'm gonna, you know, we're planning on harvesting, but then who knows, it could be drizzling or it could be, you know, we just, every day, I guess that's what kind of keeps it interesting. You never know, never know what you're gonna do. And your plan for the day that starts at seven or eight o'clock may change in the first five minutes or it may last till noon or you may be you know but you you got to be able to be flexible I guess and just kind of go with the flow and appreciate what you can get done in one day and start over the next day ever since I've young, I've been little you know he showed me how to do everything I think that that's probably the biggest uh, one of my biggest challenges right now is there's a big gap between the my generation and dad's generation so what I think comes easy to me doesn't come easy to him which is fine but you know they're like the, the technology part of it there's more the technology has changed in the past 10 years more than it's probably changed in dad's whole lifetime so you know it's like for me, computer skills is a no-brainer, but for him, that's something that's probably a bigger challenge. And, you know, but as for working together, we, you know, it's to the point now we don't hardly even have to say anything, you know, hand gestures and and go here, go there, and we get it, and we, you know, you couldn't probably hire somebody and be able to expect that out of anybody. Yeah. 
mean, I'm still in the building stages, but yet I'm, in my mind, you know, I hope that it can be passed down another generation past what we are. And I know I'm kind of pondering on that, but I mean, it's, there's a big time gap between there, but there is and there isn't. Cause I think that's one thing that kind of snuck up on us is like the transition from me, from dad, you know, it's like, okay, you start to realize that I have more responsibilities than what I used to, instead of just doing it for fun. Now, you know, you got to do it as you know, it's your job. So you're required or you're expected, but so I, I mean, I, like I said, I hope someday down the road, maybe I have a, have a kid that's interested or if there's somebody around that's interested that, you know, I can help somebody else get involved in ag or get them started. And if, if not, you know, obviously we, it's a family farm, it's a family business. It incorporates everybody and it boils down to, you know, mom and Rachel making meals and helping out moving trucks and doing stuff like that. And, you know, working together with dad every day. And I hope I can continue that on, to, uh, you know, who, with whoever wants to be involved. I'm, I, I won't turn down help, that's for sure. <laughs>
try to do the best you can, but obviously Mother Nature is the one that has the last say in that. But have a good looking field when people drive by it and you want, you know, I guess there's a little bit of passion and, and you know, you're, it's your name, it's your last name, it's your farm, you, you, wanna, you want it to look good, you want, you want to show your pride that you, and the time that you put in, so force yourself to get up and go to work. I, I don't have to take orders from anybody else, Dad and I work together, so you know, if, you don't have, if you don't have the willpower to do it, it ain't going to get done. You can't, you can't make somebody else do it. You know, you're going <laughs> to, that's why you may be able to take a few days off, but then you're going to work overtime or extra to, to kind of catch up or, you know, depending on the weather. But value wise, I mean, every, like I said, I don't have anything more than what every other farmer around here does. We're all, we're all in it for the same purpose. We all work together in a sense. We've all helped each other out whenever they, somebody else needs help. Well, you know, usually you're, you're right there to help pick up where they left off. So I think that's kind of cool. It just says something about our area. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have wanted to grow up in any other place. I wouldn't have wanted, you know, you pr feel pretty safe and you got a good, good neighbors that'll look after you. gets taken to our local elevator, uh, the co-op, or to an ethanol plant, which is nearby. Um, obviously, they're using it for the energy side, the ethanol. Co-op, it can go to different places. A lot of times, it'll be shipped down to the feed yards. And they'll use it for cattle production. It just kind of depends, but um, the ethanol plants been a huge factor lately. It gives us another market to take our grain to a different place if we want to. Ever since dad and grandpa, they've been always predominantly John Deere. I think, you know, now it's always the neighborhood conversation, you know, red versus green. And we've always been solid green, a green family, but you know, it's something that, it's just more the farmer controversy, you know, versus red versus green. No barn, horse barn on the place. Um, no longer here, but mainly used for their team of horses that they used every day, either for gathering up their hay or any other chores. Then once they moved to the more uh, mechanical, you know, your first, your tractors that was on the farm. Still a lot of labor, but definitely helped. And then your newer combines that they would have used. And then, uh, you know, obviously does the shelling and the gathering of the ears and then the latest family, or latest generation of family on the Pullman farm. Charge just country boys and girls getting down on the farm.